Hi, I'm Frank Cho. Well, I was tasked with to draw the Hunchback of Notre Dame, uh, Quasimodo and Esmeralda. So I decided to kill two birds with one stone. Uh, I decided to just show you guys how I draw something and, uh, and finish my uh, commission. So anyway, so here I am. I'm going to draw uh, Quasimodo, the Hunchback, and Esmeralda in a very pivotal scene uh, of the story where uh, Hunchback is tied up and was being lashed um, at the t town square and Esmeralda uh, come forth and uh, actually show him the only kindness uh, that he has ever seen and uh, gives him water. So anyway, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a Hunchback of Notre Dame. Alright. So, uh, so I'm going to basically draw, um, him kind of like tied up. Uh, there was a great scene, uh, uh, back in, I think 1939, where, uh, uh, what's his name, Charles Log Logman played the Hunchback, and, uh, I know that uh, Lon Chaney uh, originally played the Hunchback in the 1920s, uh, a silent film, but uh, but I actually enjoyed the uh, the, the Charles Logden uh, version of 1939. Um, so I'm just I'm just like kind of like eyeballing it, you know. Um, so here's the Hunchback, and. Um, so here's the chug of water. Uh, so Esmeralda. So So I'm actually trying to make sure that this whole thing is in frame. So he was, the uh, hunchback was kind of in the town square. Uh, he was on a, like a small platform. Um, and he was all tied up. Now the hunchback is actually pretty easy to draw. Uh, for me, drawing guys is easy. Um, the hard part is drawing the women. Um, so, um, so I'm going to focus on the girl first to kind of make sure that she is uh, you know, she is uh, So I have like a rough figure of the hunchback. Uh, now, here comes the tough part, drawing the girl, uh, which is kind of funny to hear me say, uh, because uh, I guess I'm known to uh, draw women well, and and that comes from years of practice, and um, and, uh, and studying anatomy. Um, I drew her feet. All right, so uh, actually, the hardest thing to draw um, is just drawing the most mundane stuff. Um, I mean, it's actually pretty funny. I can draw like a, like a superhero just bursting through a window, jumping at forty feet and bursting through a window without a problem, but drawing a convincing, um, uh, just a, a regular guy in a suit walking down the street, <laughs> that is actually pretty, uh, pretty hard for me.
So, so when I draw, I kind of like act out the scene. So I kind of like have to figure out how she will hold the 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 jug of water. And um, by actually acting it out, I can uh, visually uh, see it in my mind. Kind of, I have like a three D model of myself in my mind, and I I'm kind of rotating the basically me. Uh, figuring out how they will hold the jar of water. Now that comes just with, with practice. Um, once you learn the anatomy, um, uh, you kind of like... Uh, figure... So here I am just... So she's holding the jar. Now, a lot of people know uh, when you guys see me draw, I actually do a lot of erasing. So, um, I will be erasing a lot here, too. Uh, So I just need to get the, so I actually draw all the people kind of naked, you know, first. Uh, and then I put the clothes on them later, so. Now her head is a little too big, so I'm going to basically erase it and start over. So, um, again, when I'm drawing, I'm, I kind of like, uh, it's weird, I, I actually, I noticed that I actually act, act out the scene. Um, so here's Elsmeralda showing, uh, compassion to the hunchback by giving him water. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen the movie, the 19, I think the 1939, uh, Charles, Charles Logdon, uh, um, version, um, God, who was Elsmerelda? It was, uh, God, she was the, uh, she was in The Quiet Man with John Wayne, uh, Marie, no, Maureen Sullivan? No, Maureen O'Hara, I, th I think that was her name, Maureen O'Hara. So anyway, so uh, so she is the gypsy girl. So like a proper gypsy girl, she needs like a uh, like a do rag on her head. So all right. So I usually do the hair last. Because, you know, uh, once I have everything down. Uh, so there's a collarbone. So I draw the the the, the boob last I, I, if I can. So you, so you try to get all the, the main figure work done. Um, the bicep. So I actually go by like um, I deconstruct the anatomy, and then so so I actually do a lot of this. I, I actually hold my hand up and try to figure out how how something is held, you know. So so like if you see me draw in public and I start doing all these hand gestures and stuff like that, uh, I'm pretty sure people think I'm crazy. Um, 
but I'm not. I'm well, maybe I am. I don't. I don't know. I mean, uh, to be an artist, there, there's a certain um, there's a certain mentality to be an artist. Usually, not giving a crap about anything. Uh, all right, so. So this is kind of like um, so this is just basically my prelim. Uh, so what I often do is I would draw the figure um, from my head to get the the general pose, and then. Um, and then once I do that, and um, I'll go uh, through my reference file and correct any uh, any anatomy. I mean, you know. Uh, actually, I'm also at a weird angle. Uh, I don't normally draw standing up. Um, but because the way the camera is set up, I am drawing standing up, so this is kind of weird. Uh, Alright, so here's the thing. Now, I notice the Quasimodo is too high now. So, um, I have to lower the entire figure. So, that's why we have the eraser. So, you erase the entire thing. Because I think I'm pretty good with uh, Elsmeralda uh, figure where she's at, and then so you have the water, and then so you kind of have to like kind of like work your way back where Quasimodo is uh, drinking. I know, I mean, uh, the way I draw is, is, I'm pretty sure I'm breaking a lot of the rules. I mean, uh, you're supposed to have, you know, have everything mapped out. Uh, most of the time I don't. I just, I, I just start drawing it until it looks right. Um, but that's just the fun of it. Fun of it is just kind of like figuring stuff out. So, Alright, so. Here's the trap. Here's the deltoid. Here's the R behind the back. And here's the his, here's the big giant hump. And here's the stomach. And here's the hip area. And here's the leg. Too high up, so I'm gonna have a more crouch, more. Like I said, again, a lot of racing. Actually, the story of uh, Quasimodo um, is actually pretty. Uh, it's a pretty sad story. About the about the indecency of people who are different than they are, and just the uh, just the wanton power power grab and greed of the the corruption of the uh, of the church of the religion. So nothing really has changed if you think about it, that the story is it can be told about today, today's life.
All right, so you. All right, so there. Okay, so I got the basic figure down of the Quasimodo, uh, and then this is where I start refining. Uh, I mean, they did a really beautiful job uh, with the makeup, uh, the, the the Charles Logden movie. Uh, so. So all the Quasimodo had uh, um, so his a lot of the the movie different movie have one eye his his face is asymmetric Quasimodo's face is asymmetric one side of his face is uh, a lot lower so I'm gonna try to uh, illustrate that but. It's kind of weird if you do a deformed face. Uh, it, it you know, like it, it doesn't look right because it's deformed because your um, your brain has a uh, has an innate programming to let you know if something doesn't look right. So um, so that's why a lot of the uh, the the you know the, the CGI stuff doesn't doesn't work uh, because like even though even though how great it is done your brain will always pick up the very subtle um, subtle detail that doesn't quite uh, register in your brain that 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 your brain says something's not right and so that's why a lot of the CGI's uh, looks off I mean that's why I, I prefer the uh, the the real um, the real prosthetic, you know, um, stuff, if they can get away with it. Alright, so I'm basically trying to use the, uh, um, uh, uh, the Charles Logden mod. I mean, Charles uh, Logden, he was more, uh, more robust, uh, should I say more f fatter, he was a very stout guy. Actually, kind of looks like the Hulk a little bit. <laughs> All right. Here comes the fun part: drawing the uh, the anatomy. So the guy. Uh, the town or, or, the, or the church punisher um, in the movie has uh, ripped off Quashimoto's uh, um, shirt to expose his, uh, his back naked flesh so they could whip him so so they have his hand tied um, Yeah, it was, it was in the movie. They he, he was on just kind of like this uh, raised, almost looked like a wheel, like a pedestal. Um, and uh, to make it dramatic, we'll put a collar, collar around his neck. Uh, 
so drawing is all about uh, exaggeration so I'm going to make the hump a little bit bigger So we'll have the, the, so the camera is, we'll just make this like the horizon line. And then from there you can, you know, the camera will tilt up and tilt down from this horizon line. So this pedestal have to be, it has to be uh, tilt down a little bit if you actually uh, kind of, so there's like a certain, um, which will give it the extra, uh, the three-dimensional uh, look. All right, and then here's his leg. And his calf, his lower leg is tucked underneath that leg. And then his feet is tucked underneath that. The thing about drawing in pencil is I just love the you know the messiness um, you don't have to be precise you can just like um, just wing it you know can't stress enough to uh, for all art students and artists out there to stress anatomy I mean know your anatomy I mean it is um, once you have the anatomy down you can actually do anything you can draw anything uh, a lot easier It's been about like 25 years since I've seen this movie. About 20 years. I might actually, uh, once I finish drawing this, later on tonight I'll look for a, a Blu-ray. Uh, and, and see it again to see if it held up, you know. I've seen this when I was in, uh, middle school. Uh, middle, no, or high school. I remember I was like really moved by it. Just by, just, you know, the, the such such pity, you know. Um, and you know, just horrified the, uh, you know, just the, 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 in, the inhuman, the inhumanity of men, um, and how people can be absolute monsters to each other. Uh, Another good one, another good version. Um, 
I think it was, um, what was it? Uh, it was Anthony Quinn, if I remember correctly. Uh, he played uh, the Hunchback in the 19, uh, I guess in the 60s. That was a pretty good one, too. And uh, I guess besides, since the Disney film, I don't think um, they have actually done another Hunchback movie. If they did, I don't know. So it's, here's a little detail thing. So he's tied up, and then after he was tied up, they ripped the shirt off of him. So so you have the, the shirt over the, the rope. Is those detail always makes the picture, you know. So people often ask, do you use models uh, when you draw? Um, not really. Most of the time, no. Uh, every now and then I would use a model, but most of the time this is what I do. I just like draw it straight out of my head. Um, but there's it's, there's a lot of just guesswork. You know, you're figuring stuff out. Um, The trick is to keep which part in the shadows. Um, I mean, there was a um, might have been was it Wally Wood or uh, might have been Wally Wood who uh, <laughs> who had a great saying: that, um, uh, "If you if you can't figure it out, uh, black it out." <laughs> So, so uh, that actually stuck with me. Um, so here I am, basically blacking out uh, um, the stuff. So, but you have to know where the the light source is. So the light source is coming from here, kind of yeah. So from the top. I like the high uh, northern light, you know, those are always uh, um, pretty good. I move the pedal still I have to kind of like get all the this is what's so great about pencil I mean you can just do anything you can just you know it doesn't have to be exact all right so I am going to um, Actually, Lon Chaney uh, Sr., uh, he actually did a really nice job of Quashimoto, uh, the first big blockbuster, one of the first big blockbusters of the 1920. Uh, what's amazing about those guys back in the 20s, like a lot of those guys did their own stunts. 
So it's absolutely amazing um, because not only did Lon Chaney did most pretty much most of his stunt, he had to do it in full costume. And back then, um, back in the twenties, this well, back then in general, they really didn't have any like a real uh, professional safety uh, coordinator. So uh, if something goes wrong and the actors get hurt, uh, that's it, you know. Kind of funny, like uh, I I seem to like draw fifty percent and erase fifty percent. <laughs> That's what it feels like to me sometimes. I mean, I don't know how people survived back then, you know, um, I guess this was, takes place in the, uh, um, I guess 1600 or something like that around there. Um, I mean, there's no penicillin, no vaccination, nothing, no modern medicine. I don't know how people survived. Uh, I mean, reading about that, I'm, I'm a big history guy, so reading about that time, I mean, it definitely is. It, it, the, the whole area, everything stunk. I mean, like, it's, it's just, just the body odor, you know, just people not bathing, and, you know, so, I mean, that's, that explains the really super high mortality rate, uh, in general, during that time, you know, before the 20th century, um, uh, the mortality rate was just high. It's only got better, uh, started getting better, uh, in the late 19th century, uh, when uh, science and modern medicine start taking its uh, baby steps. Um, so yeah, so I actually, uh, you know, I actually think about what it would been like to live back then, and then I, you know, and then I guess the the uh, the, the the germ folk, the modern <laughs> the modern human part of me basically think god it would have been god awful i mean uh just from uh just just from the the sheer ignorance and the superstition of the of the people back then um you know so okay so Yeah, I'm a bit of a, well, actually, I am a clean freak, so just the idea of not bathing, you know, I mean, they were literally bathe like a uh, few, you know, once a month, uh, even if that, you know, at that, I mean, there's like stories about kings uh, who are just absolutely nuts, the royalty would not bathe, uh, and, and, the, and the clothes would just rot off them, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's just kind of, insane yeah actually the more I think about it yeah I definitely would never go back in time <laughs> Actually, I've always enjoyed drawing monsters, you know, they always had like, a special place in my heart. I grew up, uh, I was a huge uh, uh, horror fan um, with monsters and stuff like that. Uh,
not not the modern stuff. Modern stuff is just too uh, is just too too evil. I mean, it's, it's it's to me modern stuff, modern horror horror film. It, it seems to be almost like a uh, torture porn. Uh, you know, I, I like the old the old stuff, the stuff that I grew up with. You know, the Universal monsters and and uh, Godzilla, King Kong, and you know those uh, those uh, those classics. All right, so I worked on all right. So I worked on that. So let's go back and work on uh, Esmeralda. So the expression is always important, you know. Uh, again, it's all about acting. So, so the gypsies they wear that that handkerchief on their head. So gypsies are always portrayed as uh, these uh, uh, these kind of free spirit, you know, uh, entertainers. What is actually pretty funny is I never met a gypsy until I went, I went to uh, Paris. One time I went to Europe, and there actually are gypsies. Uh, a lot of them are, um, uh, uh, you know, like uh, uh, street performers, and um, well, I hate to say it, you know, uh, a lot of petty crime. Uh, I think I got pickpocketed by a gypsy, <laughs> by a gypsy girl uh, when I was in Paris. Uh, but it's actually funny. Uh, I, I I thought that uh, like gypsies and you know uh, stuff was just like a Hollywood invention, but they actually do exist in real life uh, in today's time too. It's 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 fascinating. So I don't know where the word gypsy came from. Uh, I guess in the movie it's always like Romania. Uh, every time someone say, you know, uh, the gypsy girl, you know, I've always think of, you know, because of the movies, I think of Romania. But I get the feeling that um, I think I read somewhere that the, the actual word gypsy uh, mean of of Egypt. So uh, the original gypsy came from the the, the Egyptian area. Um, which makes sense because they always seem seem to kind of like lean toward the, the whole Middle East, uh, have a, more of a, a dusky skin, um, and more exotic looking. Alright, so... So the drawing the hand is always important. Um, if you can really nail the hand, it makes everything look so much better. The artist that I've always been absolutely uh, impressed with when it comes to drawing hand was uh, Neil Adams. Uh, Neil Adams, uh, one of the greatest comic book artists of all of, of all time. I mean, I personally feel uh, Neil just the just a half a step behind Kirby, uh, just completely changed how um, comics look, comic books were drawn. I mean, so you have before Neil Adams and after Neil Adams, and you can see like a huge difference. Um, Neil Adams single-handedly just overnight changed how uh, people were drawing comics. I mean, you got, you know, after Neil, I mean, you were, there are so many Neil Neil Adams uh, um, clone. Um, you had a uh, guy like uh, John Byrne was hugely influenced by Neil Adams, uh, and then who became like a giant superstar in his own right. 
uh, in the in the eighties. Uh, uh, um, I mean, there's countless people who were just absolutely influenced by Neil. Uh, even even the even the great uh, Bill Sankevich, who is like one of the greatest artists I've ever seen. Uh, was originally when he started off uh, was inf greatly influenced by Neil Adams. Um, um, I mean, even me, uh, I'm I'm influenced by Neil to a certain degree uh, because Neil is such a uh, such a dominant uh, dominant force in the, in the comic world, uh, art wise. And, uh, okay, so um, yeah, people give me crap about that. I always draw women with big hips and big legs, you know, which I don't see it that way. I mean, I, mean, I love them. I love my women to look like women. Not the uh, not the the fashion uh, world dictates where all the models look like uh, teenage boys, skinny teenage boys. I like my women with hips and that look like women. All the feminine charms. That's another thing that I actually kind of like, uh, is, is funny, um, back then a lot of the peasants, uh, uh, they couldn't afford shoes, so they all went barefooted. It was the only the rich and the royalty that had shoes. Alright, so, uh, so, at this point I gotta figure out what a gypsy costume looks like. Um, so I'm actually, I'm, the costume is going to be based on uh, what I remember as a, uh, the, the 1930s uh, version of gypsies. Um, so, give her a hoop earring. Uh, if I remember correctly, um, she had like some sort of like a, like a corset. corset and vest kind of thing. And some kind of like a, like a blousey kind of undershirt. Correctly, all the uh, the Hollywood portrayed Gypsy wearing these sashes. Bracelets and, and uh, trinkets. Uh, 
So once I have the main figure down, I kind of start erasing. And the fabric, uh, and the fabric is, uh, I'm actually looking at the screen right now to see if, So everyone was poor back then, back, you know. The only people who were rich were the church and the royal and the royalty. So everyone else was essentially dressed in rags. stuff in their hair. I think that's it. I think this is where it's a pretty good point to stop. Um, so there you have it. Um, uh, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, uh, Notre Dame, uh, Quashimoto and Esmeralda. Uh, the pivotal scene where uh, uh, Esmeralda show. Uh, human compassion and decency to Quashimoto and give him water uh, while when he was being whipped um, and basically later on um, Quashimoto saves Elsmeralda in, uh, in return for her kind gesture What was that line? The line that always popped up in my head was, uh, She gave me water. <laughs> so, anyway. So here it is. The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Uh, Pashimoto and Esmeralda. So, I hope you guys uh, learned something. And uh, I will try to draw something else next week. Uh, I'm going to uh, try to make this a more of a regular uh, thing. So anyway, uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I guess I'll see you guys next time.
Alright, how do you turn this thing on? 